Hi, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Um, today, I am here with Stephanie Ayer at NAVAC. Stephanie is a paramedic. Well, actually, I'm gonna let Stephanie tell you a little bit about who she is and what she does. Steph, tell Hi. everyone your name. Uh, my name's Stephanie Ayer. I am a paramedic at NAVAC Ambulance. I'm here part-time. Um, I'm here usually probably about one day a week, sometimes more, depending on my availability and time. I've been a paramedic for 22 years. I've been in EMS for 26. Um, so that's pretty much about me. Okay, and so you're a paramedic. What for who? What is the? Where are we? What is so the company we're at? We're at NAVAC, which is North Area Volunteer Ambulance Corps, um, which is an ambulance service that uh, services the northern area of Onondaga County. So we cover about 50 to 56 square miles, basically the Cicero North Syracuse School District, um, encompassing six different fire departments and all the residents and businesses and roadways within it. At any point, would you go outside of? of yeah, we, um, we do do a lot of mutual aid. Um, so anytime that a primary ambulance is not in service, um, the area is covered by the adjoining agencies. So like if we're out, somebody else comes in and covers us. If somebody else is out, we cover them. So all of Onondaga County kind of works together to make sure that everybody has coverage. Okay. I was fortunate enough to be able to observe you for a few minutes this morning um, on a call. And it, it looked to me like, you know, all the other EMSs like at the hospital and all the paramedics are yep. not EMSs, EMTs, or I yep. guess the EMSs too, right? EMTs. EMTs. Uh, EMS is emergency services. Okay. It's more services and the T's, T's are is the technicians. Gotcha. Okay. So is lots that pretty of fair to say? Lots yeah. of abbreviations in this well, Lots of acronyms. Yeah. Is that pretty fair to say that you guys get to know it's a one very, another? Absolutely. Um, it is a very small, close-knit community. Um, we've, I mean, like my partner Chris and I have both been working in this area for 20 plus years. So we wow. all went to school together. We do classes together. We do refresher classes together, trainings together, um, different fire department trainings, other ambulance corps trainings. So yeah, we um, you definitely get to know different people on different agencies. I got and, that feeling this morning. That's yeah. fantastic. And the people at the hospitals and fire departments and businesses. And you see them every day. So you do develop those relationships. That's, that's fantastic. That's great. Um, why did you choose this profession to be a paramedic? Well, actually, uh, I started um, at Syracuse University as a volunteer. Um, I started, I went out on a ride out and it just kind of bit and I, th I thought it was super interesting and it was fun and it was helping people. And so I did my first training, got my EMT and then started running calls and said, wow, I really like doing this. I got my degree. I worked in my degree field for a couple of years and really hated it. Um, and I thought, you know what, what, what makes me happy and being on an ambulance made me happy. So I went ahead and continued on with my education as an EMT, went from a basic EMT to a paramedic. Okay. Um, I worked for the city ambulance for a couple of years and then I came out here. I actually live in North Syracuse okay. and I really, wanted, question. Yeah, I really kind of wanted to serve the district that I lived in. Um, and NAVAC Ambulance has a has and always has um, had a fantastic reputation um, of a fantastic place to work, and it truly is. I was here full time for many years, and then I pursued other avenues, and I actually worked for nine one one full time. Um, but I came back part time about ten, I think ten ten ish years ago. Wow. And I've been part time ever since. Wow, so I get to help my community. I get to do patient care, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. um, I get to continue keeping my skills up and I'll do it as long as I possibly can. Okay. That's fantastic that you work here in the community mm -hmm. you live in and see your neighbors and help your neighbors. Absolutely. And that mm -hmm. really, that means a lot. And actually when I came back into EMS, that was one of the things that I kind of, I actually made a, 
a pro con list because you know I'm a list person. So I actually made a different listed out all the ambulance companies that you know are in the area and which ones I would like to work for and what were the pros and what were the cons you know pay rate um, area of service benefits um, all, all the, and people who work there um, right. and honestly what it came down to is I wanted to come back to NAVAC where I've been full-time because I live in the district um, I can occasionally you know stop home and see my kids my That's kids can fun. come here. Um, my oldest, Alex, actually kind of grew up here. He used to run in when I worked here full time and we had a refrigerator with soda and juice and things like that. He would run in, grab a juice box, sit on the couch and, you know. We, just like we, home. Exactly, just like home. So oh, that And that is definitely the feeling that NAVAC has always had. It's definitely a, it's a family. NAVAC has always been described as a big family by the people who work here, people who volunteer here the families who have been raised here, it really is truly a, uh, a hometown ambulance. That's, that's wonderful. That's got to make you feel really good it coming does. here. Yeah, absolutely. What are your primary responsibilities while you're here? Um, I am a paramedic while I'm here. Um, so basically that means we come in, we get our rig ready in service, make sure that it's stocked, mm -hmm. and then wait for 911 to send us calls. Okay, very good. And so who can call for an ambulance? Anybody, anybody with anybody. a phone. Okay. <laughs> um, so basic process, you dial 911 okay. and it goes to the 911 call center. It's answered by a call taker. Mm -hmm. Call taker asks a bunch of questions, whether you need fire, police, ambulance. They enter the call into the computer and then the computer decides where the address is and sends it to the dispatcher for that area. Okay. And then they send whatever ambulance is in service or mutual aid ambulance if that's needed. Okay, now so. I noticed this morning mm -hmm. that it was immediate that you got that call and went, yes. you were there within, I, I want to say 90 seconds, maybe maybe well, three we were, minutes. We were very close today. Okay. We were very close to our crew room. Okay. Um, so. Is that typical that you, you you're yeah. dispatched right away and oh, you're yeah. there we're, so quick? We're right out the door. Okay. Um, and That's literally nice to know the, for the tones drop and we're there. Okay. So it's not like we're going from a, a long distance. Right. Um, you, even at the edge of our district, which Bridgeport would be the probably the furthest part of our district from from our core room. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> even that, I mean, we're usually there within within 10 to 12 minutes. But the beautiful thing about the way that the system works is that the fire departments are also first responders. Yeah. So on certain types of calls, the fire department gets dispatched first or with us. And obviously, because they're closer, they get there first. Okay. And so they can actually start that life saving care immediately until we can get there with our advanced care. Oh, wow. okay. That's nice. Yeah, it's a great, it's a tiered system and it works. It works beautifully when it works. So besides possibly having the fire department Mm -hmm. arrive first what can people expect when an ambulance arrives um first thing that we're going to do is we're obviously concerned about the scene safety we're concerned about our safety the patient's safety everybody's safety um so we're going to as we approach we're going to make sure that everybody is safe that we're safe going in and then we're going to assess the situation we're going to ask a lot of questions because that's what we do um, we're going to take vitals. We're going to listen to lung sounds. We're going to look at medications. We're going to look at the environment. We're going to look and see if we are picking up any clues as to why, why we're being called, as well as obviously what the person who called us is, is complaining of. Um, yes, why I got into this. Another reason that I absolutely love this is no two days are ever the same. Um, no two patients are ever the same. No two complaints are ever the same. So it's very, an, very much an individualized process. So, um, and it's about making relationships. You know, you go in on somebody's worst day or po potentially their worst day, and you have to make that immediate connection that says, hey, I'm here, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna do everything I possibly can to fix your problem or organize the chaos. And, and it's a puzzle. You know, you right. have to make all the pieces of the puzzle fit and, you know, do what's best for the patient. Sometimes, There's got to be things that, that they can do to help the process. Is there, is there things that the patients can do to make it a smoother um, Absolutely. Call? Yeah. Um, just tell, some, tell everyone what just those are. general ideas that are really good things to have in case there is ever an emergency. Um, one of the best things that you can ever do is have a medications list. 
um, a history list as far as all of your medical problems. Because for example, if somebody can't tell us what's going on, if we have at least that background history information, we can have a jumping point, we can have a starting plan. So just actually a single piece of paper with your name, your address, your demographics, date of birth, um, your medications, um, if you take any, uh, your medical history, your emergency contacts, and your insurance information. If you just have that like on your refrigerator or someplace that's easily accessible, it makes everything go a lot smoother. Um, making sure that your house is well lit, making sure that the numbers on your house are readable. Um, that's a huge, huge yes. help so that we can get there quicker, obviously, and, you know, identify where we're going. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that when yep. I'm looking for addresses, that is difficult yeah. if it's not yep. lit up and clear. Absolutely. Okay. Um, what else does NAVAC do? Because I was online on your mm -hmm. website right. and it looks like NAVAC does an awful lot besides the ambulance, which is probably your prime role, but what else right. does NAVAC do that you know of? Um, I actually teach CPR here. So CPR is another thing that we do um, here at NAVAC. Uh, we teach classes to the public, to businesses, um, to healthcare professionals. So we do quite a bit of that um, public education. We host classes, um, we do trainings for our members as well as um, fire departments. Um, everybody needs to continue learning. Medicine is something that we practice. So it's practicing medicine. Um, so you have to continue, continue to educate yourself on what's going on, new interventions, you know, and also, you know, how to work with our neighboring fire departments, our citizens, everything. So if someone were to want, if either an individual or a business, like I know, mm -hmm. you know, through the gym, when mm -hmm. I teach classes, we have to take CPR. Right. How would how would people register for a training? Um, actually, if you go right to the AHA website, um, okay. we're listed as a training site. I don't know whether it's under North Area Volunteer Ambulance Corps or NAVAC. Right. It's I'll under put one it of the up, two. but what I, I looked on your website, yeah. it's navac.org, but and I'll it just, put it up. It lists the classes and the times, and you just go ahead and sign up through there and then come to our um, 603 North Main Street um, in North Syracuse and get a fantastic class okay. and get all your training. So easy peasy. Very easy peasy. Okay. And for, I know for, we used to, and I believe we still do for larger businesses, mm -hmm. we can do on site. So if oh. you have like a large group. Um, you can or, come to them. Yeah. Okay. The instructor will come to them. Fantastic. Yeah. Now you mentioned earlier about the volunteers, and I know that's yes. a big, big, important <clears throat> piece. Absolutely. Um, if someone were to want to volunteer here at NAVAC, yeah. what do they need to know? Um, Honestly, they just have to have a desire to help people okay. and um, come in, meet with our director of training or our um, director of volunteer, volunteers, um, fill out paperwork, do a ride along, um, see if you like it. Um, and if you do like it and it's something that you want to do, um, volunteers are always needed. Okay. So we'll give you your CPR, um, we'll do some basic um, first aid, and then we have our own full training program that you go through as a basically a tech where you ride as a third and you learn where everything is on the ambulance and you do assist skills and you, you know, you, you just That's kinda, fantastic. Yeah. So your volunteers get trained. Absolutely. So they come in and they, they, they know how to help yeah. you because you teach them. Absolutely. And they get their their first aid and their CP, CPR first aid, courses. CPR. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. And then even from there, I mean, New York State is begging for EMTs right now. So okay. um, going through an EMT class and getting your EMT and learning how to do that initial patient care and that basic life support um, to maybe continue your education or be a BLS crew chief and then learn how to drive the ambulances and learn how to respond. And you now it's all one big, long you know, that's, fun process that's because good to know. it truly is a family. NAVAC is a huge family. Uh, that's good so. to know. So your volunteers have to be 18. I read that on yes. on the website. So yep. 18 or older, mm -hmm. they can go right to your website. Yep. If go to they the are website. interested in learning more information Absolutely. or coming in and or checking, come checking in. it out. Yep. Come in, um, talk to our office staff. Our office staff is fantastic. I met your office staff. They are fantastic. They're wonderful. They declined um, for a little photo op, but that's I got right. it. That's okay. They, they weren't camera ready. They were they, not we camera it. ready. Okay. But no, the ladies and guys in the office, our director of operations, Evan, our assistant director of operations, Jason, absolutely fantastic. They make this 
place run. I met Jason. He's fantastic. Yeah. He's very, very nice. And um, and I hope to meet Evan at some point down the road. Yeah. But, um, but our office staff are great. They're the ones who make everything run. They handle all of our our questions, our CPR class um, bookings, our paperwork, our pay, our bills, our paychecks, our, our everything that lets us just run it. Run They're the glue. Calls. They're the glue. Yeah. They absolutely they're are. The they're the ones behind the Oreo cookie. Absolutely. They, they hold everything together and they're, they're the ones behind the scenes that make everything run. Well, I really appreciate this time stuff. One um, other thing I did want to mention. Oh, I was going to say that. Oh. Anything else? Anything you, else you, you want to mention? You know, you think that we actually planned that segue, but we didn't. <laughs> um, and also the other thing, um, NAVAC does do quite a few fundraisers throughout the year. Uh, that's another way that people can support in the community. Um, we do a daughter, our daddy daughter dance. Um, and we also do um, golf tournament. So okay. those are excellent ways for our businesses if they wanted to sponsor a hole or if um, somebody wanted to, you know, put a golf team in or, you know, just go have fun with your, your family. That's so, good for people to know. Yeah, so, so definitely watch the website or okay. if you're driving down Route 11, we're, we're located. You know, we have a sign out front that's over it's advertising whatever's coming along. Um, also, you know, donations because it is a volunteer agency. Anytime that anybody wants to give donations, we're more than happy to accept those. I bet, I bet. And I will put up mm -hmm. all of your contact info. Perfect. Address, My contact? Not your Navex. personal contact, okay, unless you are on me too. Well, I mean, you know, no, yeah, I'm no. Good. So phone number, yeah. website. Website's gonna be the big one, right? Yes, That's absolutely. where people can start mm -hmm. and learn about where they can donate, where they can get information about volunteering. Yes. Um, all kinds of stuff, right? All Absolutely. of your fundraising. Yes. All right. Well, I think that'll do it. Is there anything else that I, I forgot to cover? Not that I can think of. All right. Well, this was this was really enlightening. This was a great. Did talk. you have fun? I did have you fun. You want to come volunteer? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, there I might. Go. I mean, when I'm 18. Okay. Yeah, you got a couple <laughs> years for that, right? <laughs> yes. That works. Right. Okay, Steph. All right. Thanks, my friend. Anytime. Thanks, Park Bench. I'll see you soon. See you on the next one. Take care.